Hello there guys and welcome to another episode of Genuine Chit Chat. This week is another special episode while I'm basically on holiday. So obviously last week you guys heard our Somerset Cider road trip, oh that's a bit hard to say, um, which we recorded around June sort of time and as of recording this in August we've just been to Manchester and to the Lake District as well. Now obviously the road trip that was recorded last week had already been put on Patreon for my lovely supporters and this week as another couple of Patreon episodes and in the next week or so I'm going to then be uploading the road trip episodes for this road trip I just went on onto Patreon as well. So any reason you want to go to Patreon and support the show for as little as one pound a month which is like one dollar twenty or something like that and you get access to at least once a week you get afterthoughts episode which is what this episode is going to be which is tv and movie reviews Uh, and then also you get whenever me and megan go on trips to places we record on our phone and uh, then talk about that and things while in the car and we've got i think about 40 minutes for manchester and 40 minutes for the lake district so there's about 120 minutes of patreon content just for the road trip that i've just been on and that's gonna be uploaded soon But yeah, next week we'll be going back to normal. I've got an episode recorded with a gentleman named Craig from the Rational Ignorance podcast. It's a really, really good conversation. I'm very thrilled about having that. And I've already got more podcasts lined up for the coming months as well. So to clarify, the first review on this, which is about 10 or so minutes long, is the Watchmen review that me and Megan did, uh, Watchmen Director's Cut, one of my favourite movies ever, and uh, I'll leave you to find out what Megan thought of it. And then Little Miss Sunshine is a film which, it's a people movie, as I always describe them, and yeah, it's just those two. This time I just thought I'd release this as it's quick and easy and I don't really have time to, you know, record and edit all the other sort of bits and pieces for a new episode, but we'll be going back to normal next week. And obviously guys, this is a little insight into what kind of stuff you can expect in Afterthoughts. As of now, there's like tens if not does that, there's probably tens of hours i don't think i'm quite at the 100 hour mark yet for content on afterthoughts but every week i release something on there often i'll release two things and on this main feed when part one of an episode drops on patreon part one and part two drop in one big unsplit episode and then whenever part two drops on this main feed patreons get a little extra something uh, on the same day of release too so there's lots of reasons to check out my patreon patreon.com slash genuine chits chat i could link to it in the description as well and i know a lot of you guys do support it already but any more people willing to support the show for only only one pound a month really really means the world to me if you enjoyed this sort of thing this is exactly what you can expect you get a link to an rss feed you can put it into the podcast player of your choice whether it be overcast or pocket casts or any of those things i'm not going to list all the podcast apps because i'll be here all day but you know it, it supports the show it means the absolute world to me uh, but if you can't do that you know share the show on social media tell your friends about it leave reviews on Podmatch or pod chaser or any of the pod apps that you listen to on you know even apple podcasts and things like that you know any amount of speaking about or reviewing or sharing or anything like that just really means a lot to me if you don't want to financially contribute to the show but anyway guys that's going to be enough from me otherwise this will be all rambly at the start so hope you guys enjoy this i'll provide a few more details in the description there's not going to be an outro for this episode because i'm trying to get it sorted rather quickly but as i said next week we'll go back to normal so yeah thanks guys i present to you the watchman director's cut afterthoughts episode followed by the little miss sunshine afterthoughts episode Welcome to Genuine Chit Chat, where we have honest conversations with interesting people. And I'm your host, Mike Burton. Okay, so we watched the director's (laughs) cut of the Zack Snyder film Watchmen that was out in 2009, I think. And it's one I of my. I wish we hadn't. Well, it's one of my favourite movies. Uh, the director's cut is twenty minutes longer than the standard, so the director's cut is three hours long. The original cut is two hours forty. And what I loved, I love Watchmen. It's what a film I've seen many, many times and enjoyed thoroughly. And I thought because Megan likes the boys, um, I thought maybe, you know, they're quite dark. They're quite that sort of way. Maybe you'll enjoy this. Um, Mike was wrong. Yeah, Megan, why don't you tell everyone what you thought of uh, Watchmen? Didn't like it. I didn't like it. You like that? I just thought it was a bit boring. It lasted a long time Hmm. for not really much reason. And it just. I don't know. I can't even remember what I said earlier about it. I've already forgotten what happened in the film. That's how insignificant it is to me. Well, you said it was confusing a lot. It it is really confusing. I I genuinely don't really understand the plot of the movie, and I've watched the entire thing. Yeah, because you you didn't get until halfway through the movie when you asked about it. You didn't realise it was all about all the Cold War and the Vietnam War and the sort of American history. Yeah, well, this is the thing. I I don't really know that much stuff 
I don't know that much about it. So for me, watching it, I felt like I needed to have had a history lesson in advance <laughs> to actually understand what was going on. He is very political. I will say that. It's not... It's one of those films that is very much... Some people love it and some people hate it. It's quite Marmite. It's like the Marmite of the superhero films. It's... <laughs> A lot of people I know really don't like it and a lot of people I know really do. And I'm, I'm in the camp who really does, but I never, I didn't read the graphic novel. I saw the film, then I read the graphic novel afterwards and I didn't finish it. But this was when the film came out in 2009. So I was like, I don't know, how old was I then? In 2009, you would have been in 15? year 10. Yeah. yeah, so I was 15. So I think I saw it on DVD a little bit after that. So I was like probably 16, 17 when I watched this film for the first time. And then I read the graphic novel and I just couldn't get through it. It's, it's, it's very wordy. I'd probably revisit it again, but it's, it's a lot to deal with. It's quite different from the film. I just, I don't know. I just, there was just so much, like we had this conversation earlier and the, you thought I would like it because it's kind of the same realm of the boys. But the issue is, is that with the boys, it's a series. So you can spread it out over a longer period of time into, mm. into chunks and makes it so that you can actually understand what's going on without having to cram it into a three hour movie. So, like, if it had been a series, then I might have enjoyed it. But the oh. thing is, is that it, it gave you the basic information that you needed. But then if you didn't know a different base level of information, you're already losing out on it. So it's yeah. trying to cram in, like, four different origin stories in a three-hour mm. film whilst also explaining a really convoluted plot. So it just... It wasn't my cup of tea. One of the things I will say is it does feel like... The, the plot is very convoluted, I will give you that. It is quite... I think it took me until the second watch to fully understand everything, and I'm not going to make you watch it a second time, don't no, you worry. No, I'm not going to watch it a second <laughs> no, time. But I did want to watch the director's cut, which I, if anyone hasn't seen the director's cut, I would uh, recommend it. There are a couple of scenes which are in the director's cut noticeably that aren't in the normal cut, and it was cool. Although I think the sex scenes went on not too long. Oh my lord, the sex scene in that film just went on for ages. It was just uncomfortably long. It's just <laughs> it like, was. please stop, Different positions for the love stuff. of God. It's how they're both fairly attractive people, but it doesn't really mean I want to watch them kind of vaguely thrusting at each other on a ship for ages. It's like, I don't... Once you see them initiate, that should kind of give the gist of you understand what's going on. You don't then need to It's like to a watch. porno. It's like a real minus, soft Minus the D. Yeah, you don't get to see the only D, D that you see. Right, okay, that's another thing with this film. <laughs> is why has the blue man got like Manhattan. blue man? Why <laughs> why has the blue man just got his dick out all the time? And people think that that's a normal thing. I know. And then there's that other scene where fake Batman is in his like lair, <laughs> and he's there, and he's just completely naked. And the girls go, the girl goes in, and she's like, "Well, yeah, this is normal. It's, it's normal for superheroes just to be walking around completely naked all the time, <laughs> like." My boyfriend does it. This guy does it. Like it must be a thing. It's just I don't understand. Yeah, the- and the blue man is so dull. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's so boring. It, you did bring up a question, which was like, how come Silk Spectre liked him so much? And the answer, like, I don't know. I mean, maybe p- power or safety in some way. Like he's just so intelligent. And maybe that's an attraction. But he is very bland. He's so so dull. And like the other characters, just is really weird. Like there's the weird mask man. Which is Rorschach. a fake, fake scarecrow. Rorschach. He's amazing. I like Rorschach. He's not amazing. I don't like him he's as a person. He's fucking though. nuts. He's an interesting character. I like how he's basically a superhero that's completely on the edge. Who's don't, just like his, like, don't like his mask. I don't like the fact that the, <laughs> all of mask. the images move. I love it. I don't like the fact it doesn't get explained, though. I had to look it up after watching the film, and apparently I think it was from... I think I read it was from Dr. Manhattan might have given it to him, but I might have a thousand people screaming at me, and I'm wrong. But... I don't know. I like his mask. I, I think his mask makes, is really, really cool, and I like his sort of... Not quite origin story, but this, that horrible dark story about that guy who killed the girl and then fed her remains to his dogs. Yeah, that was gross. Mm. Sad that the doggies died. Yeah. Yeah, I guess by that point, Warshack had just kind of given up caring. Yeah. Also, I don't understand, like, why the girl freaked out so much when she found out who her dad was. <laughs> like, obviously it would be a massive shock, but she was, like, screaming. She was like breaking down, like fully breaking down. It was just like, all right, mm. okay, <laughs> cool. And then because of that, the guy was suddenly had some, the blue man suddenly had some sort of feeling in him. It was like, okay, I, it's just, I just didn't didn't get it. I didn't get their dynamic or their chemistry or rather lack of, but I suppose that's the point. Yeah, I guess that's why she kind of gets full to the night owl, but it is. It is, I guess, she does kind of say that he becomes less and less like a person. I guess that's kind of part of it. Is that that is kind of what he, he? That's the idea that he's become less and less of a person, and she's just 
become more and more distant from him mm. as it's the time is approaching. Yeah. I mean I didn't I didn't hate the film. Like I didn't it's not in my things of I absolutely loathe, but like it's just very long. I definitely wouldn't watch it again. No. And it is it is a very long film. It is it is one of those films I wasn't I wanted you to like it, but I wasn't hundred percent sure if you would. I thought it is dark and it is interesting and it is different. So I thought maybe those would take the right boxes. But the the convoluted plot and the, the constant blue willies. <laughs> and it was just sort of unnecessary. And then there was a bit where there was like five blue dicks on the screen. I was like, <laughs> I thought why? you enjoy that part. <laughs> you're always saying it stuff that there's not enough willies. No, okay. So now I have to explain myself because you're making me sound like a perv. So my issue is, is that in films and TV shows, women always, like, not always are naked, but it's always the they women that are naked. You, they get their boobs out and like you see them and it's always... Like, even in Game of Thrones, you see tons of boobs and then I think you see like penis like once or twice and even one of them of one of them is like right in the background because it's like a slave behind the Dothraki just walking along and you can just see him in the background but like I don't want to see loads of penis that's life but the thing is is that I just don't think it's fair that women are always naked but my issue with this is that it's one thing if you see a peen just for like a moment because it's not like you see boobs for like extended periods of time but there were like bits in this film where there was just a dick on the screen for like <laughs> Flopping around as he's walking. A consistent period of time. Yeah, and then he's walking and it's like wiggling around. It's just like, he's also just semi-erect all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a flop. Uh, the thing is as well, is uh, bouncing off that, is that when he's in his own homestead and he's naked, I get it. Because I'm like, okay, maybe he's just comfortable, he doesn't really care. But then there is that end scene where he does... Well, he just sort of talks to them and he's he just walking around in, naked. Yeah, he's just walking around naked. Yeah, when he does the thing at the end, he's naked. It's just like, what? And even when he's not naked, all he's wearing is this weird little, like, sarong. Banana hammock. Banana hammock. And then the only time that you see him fully clothed is when he goes to a funeral. Yeah, I guess it's the funeral where they're, like, a couple of important business beatings with, like, the president and stuff. Yeah. President Nixon. Yeah, so overall, it's Megan's favourite film ever. <laughs> she, we're going to watch it every couple of months. Uh, Absolutely not. It's going to be a struggle trying to get you to watch the series. I'm not that. going to watch the series. Oh, my God. So, said it here, everyone. Heard it here first. It's going to happen eventually. <laughs> I think I down. think the thing is is that you've made me watch so many... Superhero stuff. Superhero things recently that I'm kind of just superheroed out. And they've all been dark superhero things. And to be honest, they've all been fairly similar. Like, even in this, it's, kind of, it's basically the plotline of Batman. Well, you're not going to like Daredevil very much. But yeah, but the, my, Daredevil's a series, mm, so true. it's different because it's split into chunks. To whereas fair, Daredevil is not like Batman. I was just being joking in that sort of words. It's quite it's dark and stuff, but it's definitely different. It's not about some sort of crazy immortal person who's just <laughs> trains you to be the person in the League of Shadows, and then the Joker shows up. Yeah, it's it's just like very... But also, like the Aussie Mandias character, like had some references to the poem, and like I, I knew as soon as he said that his name was Aussie Mandias that it was going to be to do with. Ramesses the second because of well, I had no idea because I'm an uncultured swine <laughs> because of the poem but like so like as soon as I knew his name I was like well he's going to have some sort of fall from power because that's what happens in the poem but it was just kind of like I don't really know why your name is associated to Egyptian pharaohs like there's no real connection to it there might be that I don't know about but I didn't even know about that poem so I'm a scrub when it comes to that yeah well yeah I think it's a visually stunning film and it is really nice to look at and in like the characters it's good but it's completely fair I, I do understand it is one of those films where I do understand why people don't like it it's not like you know if you saw Dark Knight and thought that oh shit I'd be like well it's kind of hard to it's Dark Knight one of the greatest movies to ever exist I'm Michael that is that is me <laughs> I do have a lot of favourite movies though, and Dark Knight is definitely one of them. But yeah, that was, I guess, our general thoughts of the director's cut of the Watchmen movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and Megan did not. What was your... Gone out of ten, then. What would you give it? I think out of ten? I think I've got an idea what you It's pretty it. damn low. Oh, you're going to give it like a four, aren't you? I was going to give it like a three. Ooh. Okay, that's fair. Three Maybe like a three and a half at a push. <laughs> oh, three and a half. Whereas <laughs> me, I'd, I'd say it's... For me personally, it's a nine, but I think trying, oh, to, be, my I God. Think trying to be objective here and kind a of nine. Trying, trying to be like how much I think it would be rated sort of commercially and that sort of thing, I think I'd give an eight. I can't I even begin solid. to think how you can possibly see that as a nine. It's one of my favourite films. I absolutely love it. It's so good. Uh, it's just, it ticks a lot of boxes for me. What I like, it's brutal. It doesn't pull any punches. It's got some really dark storylines. It's different. It's political commentary. It's also got, it ticks a lot of boxes. It's all right, Mike, if you love it so much when you marry it. I've tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> Anyway, guys, that was our sort of me review of Watchmen. Tell us what you think and things, and leave comments or message me or whatever. And 
yeah. I'd be interested. I'm always interested to hear people's views on Watchmen because a lot of my friends love it and a lot of my friends hate it. So there we go. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> I love catching your laughs. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> And there we go. And there we go. And there we go. And there we go. And this is Michael using his podcasting voice. This is Mike using his podcasting voice. (laughs) I don't think the mic's loud enough. And there we go. And there we go. Look at the size difference in the sound. One, 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 one. So we're here with another Afterthought, and we only recorded the other one about, well, probably about two and a half hours ago. However long it takes to watch Little Miss Sunshine. Well, yeah, it was about 135 minutes, so yeah, maybe two hours ago. uh, We watched, what was it, uh, How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days? Wasn't a big fan of that. But it's Valentine's Day, so we watched (laughs) another film. and um, Something completely polar different. Yeah, although the Daily Mail on the DVD I've got, it's got like a five-star rate from the Daily Mail, which obviously isn't really anything to go for. And it said, one of the funniest comedy films of the year. And it's like, if you've seen Little Miss Sunshine, you know it's not that funny. I like I like Little Miss Sunshine. I love I love this film. Yeah, it's great. But yeah, it's not it's not a comedy film. Like there are funny <laughs> there are funny parts in it, but most of the funny parts Quite dark. Come from dark places, yeah. So yeah, I, I wouldn't call it the best comedy year. No. Comedy it, film of the year. Like, it's, I wouldn't class it as a comedy, really. It, it's one of those class of films that I kind of class as people films. There's the film Way, Way Back that is reminiscent of this, and I think it's made by the same studio. And obviously, both Way, Way Back has Steve Carell and Tony Collette in it. And she's great in everything I've seen her in. She's in Hereditary as well, which is excellent. And obviously, everyone should know who Steve Carell is. Um, but I looked up the directors, and it's two people, Jonathan Dayton and Valerie Farris, and they both made... Ruby Sparks, Battle of the Sexes, and the Smashing Pumpkins movie, I presume. Um, so that's about it. I don't really, I don't think I've seen anything else from them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a really cool film for anyone who hasn't seen it. it it's definitely the premise sounds really dark <laughs> and sounds very. The upsetting. thing is, is I don't even really understand how to explain what this film is about. I find with films like this, you can't yeah. really say that much about the plot without giving away. The film, yeah, it's it's basically about a family. It starts off with a family member who's had a lot of trouble troubles, and they kind of go on this road trip to basically. Well, they kind of go on. Well, they basically. Well, still, Steve Carell's character tries to commit suicide. Yeah, that's in the first and he and minutes. he doesn't succeed. So he ends up having to move in with his sister and the family, and then the kid gets into a pageant show and they go on a road trip. Mm. That's but then loads of things happen. During the road, the road trip, yeah, yeah, it, it's very eventful. like the whole film basically takes place with them on the road. Yeah, yeah, definitely the vast the vast majority of it does. Um, but yeah, it, was, it is a really interesting film, and it, it's a, as I said, it's a people film, so it's all about the individual characters and how they all sort of intermingle and the sort of. I think one of the obviously Steve Carell is absolutely excellent in this. So it's Tony Collette and um, so it's, the dad's really good in it as well because he's you don't like him very much, especially at the start. I think, um, yeah, everyone's really good in this film. I, I love this movie. Yeah, I, I think... I'm trying to just look up the dad. Uh, Greg Kinnear. Um, he's in loads of stuff. Um, but the, I think the son, uh, the, the yeah, it's played by Paul Dano. He's in something else I've seen. I can't remember what, but he's really good in it, the son, who's obviously yeah. quiet for most of the film. It is a good movie. I'd recommend it. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's, it's, <laughs> it's I've really... chosen these films where it's just like, well, there's not really much to say about this. I guess it's just... Um... It's also that we've we've both seen this film before. Mm. We just both fancied watching it. And it's on the scratch list, so we want to scratch Little Miss Sunshine off of our 100 movies to watch poster. Yeah, because we've got like other films like Shawshank Redemption on there that we've both seen, but there's quite a few films like Godfather. You saw that ages ago, and I haven't seen it. I watched it. that younger than I probably should. Potentially, I haven't seen it at all. A shame. I'm pretty sure I watched it in Italy with my dad. I've got it on DVD. I need to watch the. Apparently, the trilogy. They say the first one's brilliant, the second one's brilliant, but the third one's good, but not as good. Don't know. But obviously, they're three hour long films, so they're just a lot big slog. Um, but yeah, if anyone's seen Way Way Back, I think um, I'm trying to think there's some other people film because there's like Wes Anderson. There's like art house people film that's not like this at all. But it's like it's not like in Bruges. Either. I can't really think of any other films apart from Way Way Back. It's 500 Days of Summer, is that like this? I don't know, I can't remember that movie. Um, was that the Ricky Baker? Oh, Hunt for the Water People, yeah. <laughs> uh, one of Takai Waititi's films. That's a great film. Yeah, he's the guy who did Thor Ragnarok and Jojo Rabbit. Um, and he's... I, I love Hunt for the Water People, it's absolutely excellent. It's one of my favourite films. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a people movie. Like, 
it's difficult to kind of categorize what genre it is because it's not a drama it's not it's not a comedy no it, yeah it's moments, just but it's definitely not a comedy like don't go to this film thinking I want a film that's <laughs> super bad for laughs because you will not get that <laughs> you'll get a deep cutting ride that is well yeah there are it. there are some emotional moments in this film yeah obviously the way it starts up immediately is like that and I, I want to say like this isn't a spoiler or anything but what I really like is the the use of the van they've got like because they've got um, they've got the van and it's like it, it doesn't really work so they have to push it to a certain speed because it only works in third and fourth gear yeah and I just like that little it's just a fun little thing it's like a quirk of the movie that that's the thing is good. that the the, com- the comedic parts of the films are really subtle there aren't any like belly laugh no like laugh out loud moments there are just kind of moments that you watch and you're like <laughs> yeah. yeah that's funny rather than like yeah really stupid things that happen in like Superbad for example which is classed as obviously solely comedy yeah Superbad is a very funny film with a f- alright message at the end it's and stupid it's in parts very very stupid it's not a film that you go in for a message or to learn anything but Su- Little Sunshine is quite a it's, it's kind of heartwarming a, yeah I feel like if you had a teenager who was the right age it would be good to kind of show them this sort of film like, what, who would you kind of recommend this film for what kind of age range because I think it's a fair it's a more narrow demographic than say yeah I mean films. it's got some like deep topics in it so I guess like not super young but there's nothing really like inappropriate per se in this film it's I mean the themes I think it's, some themes in it are not like age appropriate for young kids but no a bit of swearing I think no. obviously there's, oh there's yeah dr- there is a bit of swearing and there is a bit of drug use as well so it's, it's probably teenagers but I, I'd say when we have kids and things I'd, I'd when they become mature teenagers as in I think a 13 year old probably if they're mature enough could watch this but it's a 15 I think but still it's uh, yeah I enjoyed it so what, what would you give it out of 10 then oh, I'd give it like a 9 9 and a half nice oh, that's, it is, it's a top one of my favourite films I do love this film yeah I think I would give it uh, an 8 and a half I think it's a solid film I, I really really enjoy it I think the only probably the only reason I don't give it higher is because I think like the way we're back and Hunt for the Wood People for me they are I think Way Way Back's probably a 10 and then Hunt for the Water Oh my god, if you nine. love the Way Way Back so much, just marry Let's, let's it. watch Jesus. it and then we'll talk about it again. <laughs> just constantly again. Let's Baker. watch another movie right now. <laughs> yeah, it's half nine on a Sunday night. Let's do it. We haven't got work next week anyway. But still. Yeah, it's half time. Woohoo! Lucky for you. Anyway, guys, yeah, that was our take on Little Miss Sunshine. There you go. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> you always laugh every time you do that. It's because I'm awkward. <laughs> <laughs> You have just experienced host, creator, everything else of genuine chit-chat, and also the host and creator of Star Wars Comics and Canon, found on the Comics in Motion podcast, Mike Burton.